Beyond the outer rim. Welcome everyone to the first episode of Beyond the Outer Rim. My name is Matt. I'm Carly. And I'm Rob. And we're here to just more or less talk about Star Wars. Uh, 2019 is going to be a really big year for Star Wars, so I thought it would be kind of fun to sit down and talk about what we're excited for coming up in the new year, um, and kind of outside of Episode 9, because obviously Episode 9, it's going to be kind of the biggest thing I think we're all looking forward to, right? So let's kind of talk about what, besides Episode 9, are we looking forward to what kind of has us excited? Rob, is there anything immediately off the top of your head that you're looking forward to in episode nine? Or um, that you're looking forward to in 2019? Well, in 2019, I think we have a lot of things that Star Wars fans have just been waiting for for well, close to 40 years. We're getting our first, well, technically our second real live action Star Wars show. Uh, Star Wars holiday special, that, that doesn't count. Uh, but right. uh, we're going to get... They're going to start production on Cassian Andor. Uh, that's going to be great for those of us who love that original pro, uh, prequel trilogy era. Or not prequel trilogy, but that original, em, original trilogy era. You got it. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Thank God for editing. Um, <laughs> the, I think another great thing that we're going to see with the live action, and this is going to be really, I think Disney's going to put the work into it necessary, is The Mandalorian. Um, it's not the original trilogy era, era because technically the empire has has fallen and we're looking at a new era um one that a lot of us had thought maybe the newer star wars films were going to pick up at until we found out that the original cast was coming back with people like carrie fisher um and this is going to be right after return of the jedi and I, I think after a lot of us have been wondering what was going to be going with that is it right after return of the jedi or is it after the battle of jakku I think it's after the Battle of Jakku, but okay. I will go ahead and double check on that. So, I mean, you're you're looking forward to the Mandalorian, then. That's kind of what you're hyped yeah. about. And and a lot of it is, it's going to be Disney's mm -hmm. new streaming service, and, and this is going to be their first show. And if they're going to lure people away from Netflix, it doesn't have to be just good Star Wars. It has to be good production quality anyway. You can't just pop Star Wars on it and say, this will do, the fans will buy it. <laughs> it has to be a great show even for non-Star Wars fans. Well, and I think this is a show where, you know, you're bringing on talent like Taika Waititi. You know, you've got John Favreau as kind of the, the showrunner here. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Pedro Pascal from Game of Thrones, you know, as the lead character. I think there's no doubt that there's a lot of, of talent going into this. And it, do, it does take place three years after Return of the Jedi. So that would be... So after the Battle so of So that would be after okay. the Battle of Jakku. Um, so it is officially past original trilogy completely. Yes, one hundred percent. Fall of the Empire. Empire yeah. is fallen. That's the important part. Now we know that IG eighty eight is going to be in there, um, which is cool because in current canon we know next to nothing about IG eighty eight. Uh, I think we still he still flies the IG two thousand, which is a fantastic little ship. I think that's pretty much the only thing we know, and that's all from source books. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing's really occurred with him. Now, do we know in current canon whether or not Django, um, and by extension Boba, would be considered actual Mandalorians? I know that was um, something that was talked about in Legends, uh, where they are not like actually born Mandalorians. But I don't know if we know if that's true or not. I think as canon. far as we know, they're Mandalorians. They're just not um, part of the society of Mandalore. Uh, I believe that based on what the... But I don't know. Prime Minister, I believe it was, of yeah. Mandalore said. I'm fairly sure that because of their ideas and the way that they think, they are rejected as Mandalorians more than anything else. Yeah. Because he was pretty much lumped in with the same group of people that became Conquer Dawn. Yeah. Those people later took a, took control again of Mandalore under the Empire. Yeah. So he's essentially Mandalorian, but the Mandalorians will not take credit for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the official government. Yeah. And that's something to always separate. Your population's views may not be in line with that well, of your government. Yes. So, with this show taking place after the Battle of Jakku, um, are there, what are you hoping to see in the show as far as world building? Because I know it's going to be kind of a lone gunman type story from what I understand, but I mean, you know, the Aftermath trilogy has kind of touched on the building of the New Republic. It's something that we've talked about in Bloodline. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't know, do you think we're going to really touch on the New Republic a lot in this show, or is it mostly going to be focused on sort of the outskirts of, of civilized galaxy life? You know, are we maybe even going to see characters like, I mean, like if, if Singer or Nora Wexley showed I up? I highly doubt that we will see those characters. Um, I'm hoping it's more of like these types of people, like bounty hunters and stuff, are having to kind of learn what their place is in the New Republic. Um if or, the New Republic has, like, changed anything that the Empire did, or if it kind of doesn't. If it's just sort of a cautious, like, approaching of this new government. Um, and seeing if the New Republic actually does do anything to stop them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'll because be it interested. doesn't seem to. <laughs> I'll be interested to see it from a... Because Star Wars does have like something that you don't think of a lot is we almost always are dealing with military installations, yeah, mm -hmm. extremely rich places. Yeah, you know, your average character is a queen or a governor or a or these really high up people that yeah, or that, or high ranking Jedi, right? That and I'm looking forward to a series that isn't Jedi heavy. Sure, I wouldn't mind if some Jedi storyline or lore came into it. But for the vast majority of the of the galaxy, they never saw a Jedi. Most people didn't know about Jedi on a, on a regular as as people you might run into. They were just more of an idea than than someone who actually got involved with your life mm -hmm. um, until the Clone Wars took them out of their temples and put them into people's homes. And you know, to be honest, not many people like the Jedi after after no. meeting them up close. I think that's that's something that. I've always hurled, or I've always seen hurled at the original trilogy, which is we don't get a lot of ground level. What makes the Empire so bad? Like, what are they yeah, going around no, and doing? I agree to with that. That like a lot of the original trilogy doesn't have much world building. It just kind of tells this one story, and I don't really understand. The Empire why. is evil because they're the evil yeah, Empire. Yeah, exactly. You know, obviously they destroy Alderaan. Obviously, I understand that. Um, so, but we don't see much in the way of just on the ground, you know, them arresting people for no reason but like, and stuff I like would that. like this, like, at some point, maybe just as a little subplot or something, if this story of the Mandalorian kind of explores for these average, everyday, maybe, like, poor people of the galaxy, mm -hmm. is the Empire being gone even a difference to them? Like, does Ooh, the New Republic yeah. do anything good for them? Or are they just kind of like, well, they're these new people in charge and they're basically just the new Empire? Yep, new... Uh, new uniforms, but mm -hmm. same people. That'd yeah. be interesting. I my like dream thing that's never gonna happen in a million years. But if we get glimpses of like what Terex is doing, like building up the building up <laughs> that the is thugs, a wild dream. building up the thugs that will then become sort of the first order. Like oh man, Terex is not gonna well, show Terex, up in the show, but I would love it. Terex doesn't join the first order until the first order comes back to the galaxy. He doesn't, but he's involved. He's a bounty hunter. He's, but he's involved in a group of people that was trying to rekindle a little bit of the Empire right after Jakku happened. Is he not? Kind of. Yeah. Um, he's mostly just a bounty comic. hunter who reclaims like this empire stuff, and um, they wear imperial clothes and things, but they're just kind of doing whatever they want in the name of the empire. Yeah. Um, and then when the first order shows up, the first order assumes that they'll be allies. Um, yeah. But I think they're that's really where the not. bounty hunters can become extremely interesting yeah. because they've never been beholden to one side of the, or mm -hmm. the other. Well, and when you look at like Bloodline, you can see that the New Republic has kind of struggled a little bit to get itself on its feet and to keep its momentum going. So I think right after the Battle of Jakku is the perfect time for this story because this is going to be, I, I would be willing to bet we're going to see one of the most lawless times yeah. in, the, in the galaxy. I think... The Empire, which was a heavy-handed, very hands-on organization. I mean, the Empire started with, like, a clone army and everything. Like, the New Republic has what's left of the rebels to enforce anything in the galaxy. Right. So I think it's going to be a really lawless time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... I think I think it's just going to be a hotbed for that kind of it's, stuff. It's going to be a Western. Maybe... Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can get some Cad Bane, like finally. Big... Did Cad oh, Bane survive? Awesome. Cad, oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Cad... Um... He's going to be hard. I mean, that would be a lot of CG work, but that's the level of work that Disney's going to have to do. Well, to really considering tell us. considering we might, there's a chance we might see some Hondo Onaka in episode nine. We'll I mean, see. you know, that's going to be a lot of CG unless they just do makeup, which I would kind of hope they do. Um, 
But I mean, yeah, seeing some Cad Bane would be cool. Um, you know, seeing other Mandalorians would be cool. Um, you know, Dengar, assuming he's still around. Now, is is Hondo still technically an unaligned character? Because it seemed like at the end of Rebels, he was... He's pretty much on the side of the He's Rebels. a rebel yeah. at that point. Yeah. I, mean, I think I... he would claim he's still an unaligned character, yeah, but he's Of course not. he would. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he exactly. He claims to not care about the cause, but, but he totally does. It seemed in that final battle, he was really... He, he had gotten to a yeah. lot of we and me type yeah. of... No, I know, agree. Of language and I, I would like to see maybe he too, too became good a of general a person to be a pirate <laughs> yeah he's too good a person to be a pilot but i also don't want him to just become another military general yeah. i don't want him to be lando calrissian general of the republic yeah. Yeah. han solo general of the republic it was no hero of the republic mm-hmm. hondo Inaga. and yeah. that's how i want hondo to introduce himself if, if he did get a military rank mm-hmm. i would like him to say no hero of the republic yeah so other stuff coming out in 2019, we're going to get more Clone Wars, which I'm going to go against the grain a little bit and say that I'm interested. I'm not, like, hyped for it because Clone Wars was never fully my bag. Um, what I'm really cautiously optimistic for is uh, Jedi Fallen Order, the new uh, single-player-focused Star Wars game that we're going to get. Um, if there's one... If there is one area where I feel I've been disappointed with Disney's output, and it's a, just the one area, it would be in the in the video game department. Um, LucasArts was just a factory of creativity and mm-hmm. of storytelling that put out incredible games, like the Knights of the Republic games, the Jedi Knight games, the Rogue Squadron games. I mean, so much fantastic, you know, Republic Commando, so much amazing stuff come out. And, and then for EA to put out Battlefront, which is basically not a game, and then to put out Battlefront 2, which is what Battlefront should have been, but still not quite up to what we would... I mean, Battlefront 2 is a good story. I enjoy it. And but it's getting much better it's... now that they've actually taken control, done some live updating, yeah. added some maps. So, There's events now. So we have Respawn Entertainment. Respawn Entertainment used to be Infinity Ward, which they were in charge of a lot of the Call of Duty um, games. Um, so Infinity Ward kind of fell apart and Respawn Entertainment kind of rose from the ashes. Respawn has only made two games, uh, Titanfall, which was a completely multiplayer only, uh, mech shooter. And then Titanfall 2, which supposedly does have a very good single player campaign. I've just never played it. Um, so they're making the new Star Wars game. It's being headed up by the guy who directed God of War 3, uh, Stig, uh, Stig Asmussen. I'm probably butchering that. But it's, uh, he was with Sony Santa Monica, he was heavily involved in the God of War games, and he directed God of War 3. So that tells me we are probably going to get some really solid third-person action going on in this game, um, which all of that makes me excited. It's just that EA, as a publisher, has been so disappointing in their handling of the license that I'm just really kind of... How well this game performs critically and financially, I think, is going to be really telling of what happens with Star Wars games. Going I think EA has been doing fine on mobile gaming, like on your on your you can download it from the App Store type of games. Yeah. I just think console gaming they haven't been doing well, mostly because people just outright said, "I'm not going to play it." I'm not going to do it because of loot boxes and things that yeah. ended up not being in the game because they pulled it day one. But they just had a bad launch, and people are going to say, no, it's, it's well, not Well, that's okay. more because the company is EA. Like, EA has a history in the video game, like, world <laughs> of just being a kind of horrible company that is always going to try to yep. nickel and dime everyone every step of the way. And EA, EA has done... EA, for a while, wasn't even as bad as some other places, like mm-hmm. Activision Blizzard and... Uh, which I know that's heresy, but Activision Blizzard is very bad about it. Uh, Warner Brothers Interactive, the way they handled certain things about the Arkham franchise was really frustrating. Um, and then EA has always, you know, they followed and now they've, they've made things even worse. Um, EA has a history of purchasing studios and closing them. You know, Bioware might close if Anthem does poorly. You know, th- that's just kind of what EA does. And so I'm, I'm just nervous. I, and, and, and also, you know, I've heard this game described as it's going to be Force Unleashed, but without the, the quote, Mountain Dew attitude, which <laughs> which makes me really happy, because as much as I love Force Unleashed for what it is, 
I have never been a fan of the idea that Jedi are, like, Superman, like, level, like, can rip Star Destroyers out of the sky and stuff like that, you know? Um, Force Unleashed really fueled a lot of that sort of fervor for just over-the-top Force powers. So, like, yeah. I mean, I'm okay Darth with something Vader more scaled is down. is supposed to be the most powerful Force user. One, at least one of them. Right. And and what he does looks like parlor tricks compared to yeah. what Starkiller was. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, now they try to mitigate that a little bit by letting you play as Darth Vader in the first level and just toss Wookiees around like you're, you know, like like nobody's business. But... Which Darth Vader can still do. Um, a Wookiee is very different from a Star Destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> so... No, 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 no. Have you ever tried to toss a Wookiee around? <laughs> <laughs> it does not weigh as much as a Star Destroyer. <laughs> by the way, sorry. that's going to be the name of one of our segment: Wookiee toss. Wookiee toss. <laughs> um, there's another um, another factor is that you're not playing the. <laughs> Um, I mean, and I love Force Awakens, or uh, I love For I love Force Awakens too. I love Force <laughs> Unleashed because it had, um, you know, Sam Witwer in it. That was kind of his intro. Because I think he was Star Killer before he was Darth Maul. I think, because um, Sam Witwer mm-hmm. did he was he did the mocap for Star Killer as well as like Star Killer's likeness. That's just what Sam Witwer looks like. Um, and I-, I could talk about how much I love Sam Witwer all day. But you know, this game we're gonna be a Padawan who survived the purge. Um, so there is going to be a level of like trying to stay under the radar and trying to avoid, you know, All right. how many actually survived this purge? I'm about sick of that storyline though. <laughs> like <laughs> there are so like supposedly every Jedi died and we saw like all these people die and we see no one, but then they just are coming out of the woodworks <laughs> as we make new stories. There are a thousand other Jedi that were actually around when the rebels were and just none that, of them that's, joined up. to be fair that's something that uh, the original eu was really bad about too i think <laughs> that's just a compelling story to tell so we just keep doing it and you know we did it with kane and obviously or caleb whatever however you know i think with charles souls uh uh late recent darth vader series that just wrapped up last about two weeks ago yeah um they covered that pretty well darth vader got rid of everything yeah, I mean, once, sure once Darth Vader, <laughs> once Darth Vader, once he becomes Vader and the Empire starts taking more power, and I, I assume that's going to be a big part of the game, you know, I, I would be willing to bet we are going to have to fight Darth Vader. Um, and I mean, I, he still didn't get rid of Kanan if he supposedly got rid of everyone. Well, Kanan, Kanan, <laughs> Kanan stayed did. real low. Yeah. Like, Kanan, he, he laid low real hard. How? Like, he was part of the realm. <laughs> And the Emperor well, was there. Well, I mean, well, because Kanan hung out with Hera and just kind of didn't use his lightsaber and he just, they weren't even, like, Hera wanted Except to do like more to help. like, every other episode. Well, well, no, but, I, no, that's my point, is that, like, he didn't until the show starts. <laughs> like, Kanan and Hera were kind of being independent and Hera so wanted like to do. So he's, like, the last-ish survivor of yeah, the like, second like, purge of Jedi. Yeah, like, Hera, Hera wanted to do more for the Rebel Alliance at first, but Kanan mm-hmm. wanted to lay low, and it's not until rebels starts that he like in front of the empire uses his lightsaber and the emperor was very clear to vader he's like look you've got all the big names you've got everyone we care about we've 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 destroyed everyone we have to that the jedi aren't coming back Mm -hmm. there may be some people who were trained there might be a couple who made some basic ranks but anyone who's alive at this point they're not coming out of the woodwork and when we do we'll deal with them yeah but with jedi fallen order you know you know, we might see Ahsoka. You know, we might see other Jedi who survived the Purge. It's hard to say. Have they said exactly when it's going to be said? Is it immediately after the Purge or 10 years after the Purge? We don't know. We, we really don't know. We know very little about it. Because um, there is a lot of Jedi that you have options for if, I, it's, if I, it's immediately after I the Purge. I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe see a little bit of it for um, Star Wars Celebration. But yeah. I don't want to spend too much more time on it because it's a game we know very little about. I just want to mention that that Star Wars games are like Star Wars video games are like a big reason I got into the fandom as a kid. You know, Kotor Two is like my favorite game of all time. Star so. Wars games used to be events. I mean, yeah. uh, do you guys yeah. remember Shadows of the Empire? Yeah. That was a they had a they released a soundtrack for the book that was fantastic. It was I I loved that soundtrack. They so, did the book. They did the video game. Uh, they treated it as if it was a movie coming out. And I never really figured out was the game the important thing, the book the important thing. But there there's. I would like to see that level of hype for a book and for video games and stuff happen again. Is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to next year, Carly? I mean, I know we've got some new books coming out. Um, we've got more Resistance. we got more Clone Wars. 
you know, we've got the stuff we've already talked about. Claudia Gray's putting out a new book. Yeah. What, if any of that kind of jumps out at you? Or, uh, well, and we've got Galaxy's Edge coming out. Yes. I'm excited to see what happens with Galaxy's Edge. Um, for specific announcements, there's not a whole lot I'm really excited about. I'm cautiously optimistic about pretty much everything. Um, but I'm still kind of really looking forward to closer to episode 9's release if we start getting more announcements on other books or things taking place in the sequel era because that's, that's my favorite. Your, that's so, your era. Yeah. yeah. If Disney does not label the restrooms as the refresher, I'm going to be very upset. In uh, Galaxy's, Galaxy's Edge. Edge yeah. um, it's official. Uh, clone, uh, uh, Not Clone Wars, but Rebels. You know, we, yeah. we got a character finally to say, I need to use the refresher. Yeah. And we know what they're called now. If I think uh, we've anyway. always thought they were called that, anyways. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what we really expected from them. Yeah, so, Galaxy's Edge. Um, really excited about it. Um, Carly and I have been to Disney World several times. Now you you actually worked at Disney World for a while yes. and were there when they did Star Wars weekends and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I mean, they go full out. So I mean, what are you what are you looking forward to with Galaxy's Edge? Um. Besides I mean, just the rides. I mean, we've got, like, the Millennium Falcon ride and stuff like that. But, I mean, you know, in terms of really committing to the, the world-building aspect. Well, I mean, like, we'll sort of like Sort of like Universal yeah. doing the Harry Potter world. It's looking like it's going to be on level with Harry Potter in Universal. Um, right now, it's a really ambitious project. They're claiming that, like, individual cast members are going to have their own backstories, their own name, their name tags are, like, not going to be in English. Um... Be like they're gonna have garbage. yeah they're gonna have their whole own even, life even and that they just happen to be that. working in this gift shop or in this <laughs> attraction <laughs> on Batu. Um, so I'm really excited just to see how hard they go kind of like yeah. see what sort of world building stuff see if we get I'm pretty sure in the same way that like Harry Potter world got butterbeer and stuff we're getting Star Wars exclusive like drinks we're getting special ale and stuff that they drink on Batu. Um, made by a local brewery that's close to Disney World. Um, they're working on all kinds of stuff, and it just looks really cool. So I'm excited. Uh, I'm kind of scared to go and see it. Um, well, although at, when they first announced it, my first thought was when I was a little kid, I went to uh, Plymouth Plantation. Mm-hmm. And we're just, it's basically, it's, it's just a huge cosplay for a bunch of people who wanted to live as pilgrims. And yeah, these well, people all have advanced degrees and everything, and they talk like it, act like it. You you feel like you just happen to walk through the Plymouth Plantation. And then you can tell that the person who's in charge of farming there was horrible at it because all, everything didn't go yeah. right. <laughs> um, but it was neat because they couldn't fake that because these people were really living those lives. And I'm, I just hope that the cast members who get those jobs get that type of feeling like the people at Plymouth Plantation did. Yeah, that's my one concern, is that usually, at least when I was there during the casting process, you didn't get much say in where you wanted to be. Um, so it is very you possible... You could be a Dianoga in the trash compact. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that, really. It's just like someone who is super enthusiastic about Star Wars, who would love that, um, can say during an interview that they want to be placed there, but it's just as likely that some college student who's there on an internship who doesn't know or care about Star Wars could be the person who gets assigned to Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Um, and if they don't care, it's going to be hard to keep the magic alive. And, of course, but, Batu's not unknown to us. This was the yes. main location for the Thrawn Alliance book. And I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to seeing... I haven't been looking at a lot of photos of the location until uh, recently, mm-hmm. uh, just because I kind of wanted to see hey, did I get that feeling out of the book by Timothy Zahn that I'm getting out of this? Because you don't get a lot of options to see a book come to life and become Mm -hmm. a real location suddenly without it going through that step of being in a movie first. You know, hey, speaking of segues, we've got Thrawn Treason coming out this year. So let's kind of talk about um, the books that are coming out. We've got Timothy Zahn's coming out with Thrawn Treason. Um, E.K. Johnston is doing Queen's Shadow, and Claudia Gray is doing Master and Apprentice, which is going to be a Qui-Gon Obi-Wan book um, that's going to take place before episode one, and hot dang am I excited for more Claudia Gray. Uh, Claudia Gray has been hands down one of my favorite of the new batch of Star Wars authors. Uh, Bloodline in particular is 
a fantastic book. It's, it, it's a gut-wrenching book. It, it made me feel a lot of things. Um, she's definitely my choice for, like, if we ever get a Ben, a Ben Solo novel, and I'm really excited to see what she does with um, Master and Apprentice. Um, Rob, you've been keeping up with the Thrawn books a little bit more than I have. Do we know much about what Thrawn Treason is going to be about? I haven't heard a lot about what's going to be in it. Um, there's uh, there's some interviews with Timothy Zahn, I think the Star Wars Explained channel. When does it um, take place? Well, him. what we know is that it's going to be, um, you know, they're going to talk about how, like, after Rebels or during Rebels. So it Rebels, takes place it's gonna be during, at, like, the it, last season yeah, of it's Rebels? Yeah, it's, because it's going to happen after his TIE Defender program gets shut down. Okay. So, uh, because, you know, they're, they're going to talk about that, um, and it's essentially going to be... But like, how... Because, like, Eli, like, Eli's coming back from the first book. Okay. Um, I understand that. I'm trying to understand. I thought the TIE Defender program didn't get shut down until what happened at the end of Rebels that was kind of a big deal, and then Thrawn wasn't there anymore. So. Because, <laughs> like. That's true. That stuff happened really quickly um, when Thrawn came back to, like, confront them on the planet, and that was when the TIE Defender factory had been blown up. So, like. If that's what this book is about, I don't know when it takes place exactly. Like, it would have to be over the course of a couple of days, I guess. Like, well, I don't know. Well, it's about, um, so, uh, his TIE Defender program gets shut down in favor of Krennic's mm -hmm. stupid planet destruction <laughs> beam. <laughs> and, um, he... For he, those of those who people who don't recognize what that is, that is the Death Star. <laughs> that's the stupid planet destroying <laughs> beam. <laughs> I, I personally like in the <laughs> you know never mind I'm not going to go into it but uh, I was going to talk about in the Phineas and Ferb Star Wars special oh, yeah. where he like Doofenshmirtz created the Death Star as like a way to crack like walnuts and then he's like they made it all big and now you can't even crack a walnut with it <laughs> but um uh but the um oh gosh so like Eli Vanto comes back mm -hmm. he's he's Something's going on at in, in Thrawn's home world. You know something's going on. Okay. Um, and so he basically has to kind of choose if he's gonna keep building up his his career in the military or if he's gonna go back to the 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 Chiss and try to figure out what's going on there. Well, That's... we clearly already know what he chose there. So <laughs> <laughs> if you yeah. watched Rebels, That's true. Mm -hmm. So I mean that one. And that's a, the, the title's also interesting mm -hmm. because one thing that kept popping, happen, popping up during Thrawn Alliances was him and Vader, really two conversations kept mm -hmm. popping up. Yeah. Where are your allegiances? Are they Empire or to the Chiss? Yeah. And Thrawn yeah. never directly answered it except to say, at this time, our purposes are aligned. Yeah. And that was really important. So, I think what we're going to find is at this point, the Empire's purposes may not be aligned with Grand Admiral Thrawn's anymore by the time that book comes out. And, you know, they have some characters that have been, or actors who've been announced for the new Star Wars film that could fit the role of an older Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yeah, but did you not watch the last episode of Rebels? Like, that kind of negates all of this stuff. Well, the last like, I'm not saying he's dead, but he clearly, like, it wasn't a choice that made him leave the Empire. It was... More or less just being forced to. Right. And it does seem like the Emperor definitely trusts Thrawn mm -hmm. at that point. So I don't know what the treason could be about. Yeah. That's just what I'm interested and to right. see they exactly They only have like a four day window. Because mm -hmm. that all happens like right after each other. Because <laughs> we know when he leaves to go speak yeah. to the Emperor. And, and we, we know when he comes back. All of it. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm interested to see what it is. But I'm just a little confused on... I don't really want it to, like, retcon or try to change anything that happened in Rebels, because I think Rebels did a fantastic job with Thrawn. I think so, too. So. Um, and so I'm kind of curious to see where, what they're going to do there. And, I mean, Thrawn and Ezra, you know, you'd be hard-pressed to bring back one without explaining what's going on with the yeah. other and bringing back the other, obviously. So I'm... I'm... But we're definitely bringing back Ezra Bridger. Ezra <laughs> Bridger's, I think, going to become a huge character... In Star Wars, eventually, I just don't think Disney's maybe, maybe. said what they're going to do with him yet. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's kind of Dave Filoni's, you know, that's that's kind of was his style, you know, at the end of, uh, you know, when we had the big fight with Vader on on Malachor, you know, we didn't know what he was planning with uh, with Ahsoka, but we knew she was live, we knew she was alive, we knew she would come back. So I mean, you know, unless they know for sure that they're done with a character. Disney Star Wars has gonna done a good job of leaving things ambiguous, so that way they can always bring 
bring folks back. So, yeah. think we're going to see anything new with Ahsoka this year? Well, Clone Wars. Yeah. Right, <laughs> like, oh, like post Rebels Ahsoka? Like, I don't know. Right. I mean, The Mandalorian, we have some good chances there. What do we know about the new season of Clone Wars that's coming out, Rob? Uh, pretty much, it is finishing up storylines that were already finished before Disney bought the Star Wars title, the uh, st- franchise. So, it's not any new things that we haven't seen before. Uh, the audio was mostly released. Some pre work was already released. I think in the special features on one of the DVDs, they pretty much had the whole episodes. The episodes that they didn't get far enough to release in those special features became a comic called uh, Darth Maul, Last Son of Dathomir. It's, so, d- so, that makes me hopeful that we'll actually get a little bit more Darth Maul. Uh, probably not, because... That comic series is the only Dark Horse comic series that's still canon. So if you if you want a really good read and you want more Dark Maul, that is a canon story yeah. from uh, Dark Horse. It's the only one that's still canon, and it's called uh, Darth Maul, Son of, Last Son of Dathomir. And it picks up with Darth Maul is in it that... The Emperor has so, but but do you think that they're gonna? Do you think they're gonna take any of the the Darth Maul son of Dathomir stuff, or any of the stuff from Dark Disciple with Ventress and Quinlan Vos, um, and some of the animatics we saw with like Boba Fett, you know, picking up the armor finally and going after like Cad Bane? I think we will. Do you see think the we're Boba gonna see Fett. any of that? I think we might see the Boba Fett. Just, I don't. It, my understanding is that they're just finishing out the the stuff that was already done. Or yeah. near finished production. And the truth is we've seen most of that in one form or another because they released a lot of it thinking it was never going to see the light of day. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. So I don't hope for a lot. I, I, I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be enjoyable. I think we're going to all have a... Those of you who like Clone Wars are going to still love this. But don't expect any earth-shattering new episodes or anything of that nature because I haven't heard of anything new being written for this. If it wasn't written before, or the voice acting hadn't been done for it, they, they're not, doesn't seem like they're doing pickups for it. The only other show, um, and the only other thing we, the, the other big thing we want to talk about is just, you know, what's coming up in Resistance. Yes. Um, Resistance has been a show Which that... we don't know that much about. They release no. it about three episodes in advance, everything yeah. that we know. Because um, that's not a show like you know, it's not like a big like thing. It's a very it's just episodic a show, show so far, anyway. No. Um, which is to say, like I think Rebels, its entire first season was very episodic too. Um, so I'm not saying it's not going anywhere, but I don't know that it's going anywhere soon. Yeah, Rebels was honestly not a show that I got ever super into until we got to season three. To be mm-hmm. honest, like Rebels was a show where I, I could enjoy it, but I, I never quite understood the the because I, I i didn't fully sit through rebels until it was a little bit later and, and most of it was on dvd but it was a show that i didn't fully understand the hype for until i got to season three and then i was like okay i'm i'm, I'm now kind of really getting into this mm-hmm. and with resistance i've been enjoying it you know i think kaz is really fun um it's bb8 continues to be in everything that's important apparently <laughs> bb8 oh, is those, just those junk dealers down on down in the I don't watch this enough. I don't know their names. What are the name of the two junk dealers? I love oh, those guys. Oh, I think I they're amazing. The, yeah, are. the two, like, the guys who run the shop. Yeah. They're amazing. Yes, I, I could watch an entire series of those yeah, They're two. really fun. And we just recently finally got an episode that, that took a slightly more serious turn. You know, they talked about Kylo Ren. The kids were, were running from a, a planet where a village had been destroyed by the First Order with Kylo Ren leading them. Um, and there's this kind of mysterious symbol that Captain Doza, um, recognizes, but we don't really know what it's from. We also found out Captain Doza used to serve in the Empire. Yes, Captain Doza Um, used to be an Imperial. So there's a lot of interesting, we're finally laying the groundwork. You can tell from his mustache. Yeah, Yeah. I know. (laughs) Sorry. As if you didn't already. I'm pretty sure if it wasn't for we saw Admiral (laughs) Piet die in Return of the Jedi, he would have shown up later with this huge bushy mustache like, you know, you don't know who I am. So we're laying the groundwork in that show, I think, finally for some slightly more episode-spanning stories. And I'm just eagerly awaiting when we're finally going to get all the aces together to go on, like, yeah. some sort of big mission. Because that's what I'm excited for. I want to learn more about, like, like we have a Keldor ace that we know nothing about. We've got an ex-Imperial TIE fighter that we know a li- we, we don't know much about. So there's, like, all those aces there. Um, Doza's, what is Doza's daughter's name? 
I don't know. Because I really like her a lot. I'm feel, bad at names in the show because they don't say them that often. Yeah, they I, say them like once. <laughs> I feel, I feel and bad then, that I don't know her name. Yeah. I really like her. It hasn't been around long enough for me to yeah. remember um, everyone's name. But the show I've been happy with as far as just something fun to watch. And I'm, I'm always happy to see Poe Dameron come back. I'm always happy mm-hmm. to see mm-hmm. uh, Phasma show up in a thing. My My hope for that show is that as we get to the end of the first season it starts to get a little bit more arky. We start to see what's going on here. And we know that just Kaz's little... dad is on, isn't he on Hosni and Prime? No, we don't know that for sure. We, we just know that, know that he's sure. a senator, so he has to, like, just, he could be if on you Hosni know anything Prime. about the New Republic, like, he should be on Hosni and Prime if he's a senator. And we know this um, show is going to run which, parallel yeah. with Force Awakens. And senators That's aren't what... running around doing diplomatic missions. Yeah, yeah. not It usually. was nearly unheard of when Leia did yeah, it on exactly. Bloodline. So if you're a senator, so the for the Senate's most part, session, you're there. senators are going to be on Hosni and Prime, which is interesting potentially for this show because it kind of gives it a time clock because the show started a few months before Force Awakens, and a lot of time has already passed in his like each episode. Like it's very clear that like several weeks have passed and stuff. Yeah. So we're getting very very close to Star Killer destroying <laughs> the whole Hosnian system and potentially um, his, and potentially and potentially Kaz's, Kaz's father. Yeah. Um so I will be very interested to see if Kaz gets more involved in something for the resistance like if he becomes one of their little operatives on like different planets or something. Um if he grows up a little because yeah. right now he's very like immature because he's kind of always been handed everything because he's the son of a rich That's... senator. And right. so he's kind of incompetent, which is one like thing that I've seen people complain about for That's him. But it really it makes sense for him. Yeah. Um, he kind of just fell into all of this and he's really good at piloting. But that's it. He's awful at anything that requires common sense. He's, yeah, I mean, he's, um, he's the equivalent of like. Like the the stereotypical like spoiled rich girl who daddy yeah. bought everything for her so she doesn't have the like skills to handle it on her own like that that stereotype kind of that trope. that's essentially yeah, yeah that trope that's essentially what Kaz is but he's you know he's a guy so I think a lot of people just it comes off as annoying because they don't kind of get that that's kind of the trope they're going with with him mm-hmm. but I really like it and so I'm and yeah if I'm something excited happens to see him come into his own more with like Star Killer and he has to witness that then I'm excited to see if he like grows up a little bit and maybe his little ragtag group will become their own like resistance fighters who is aren't this, directly affiliated resistance show do we thinking that the first season's going to be pre uh, Force Awakens, and then afterwards, it's going to be after that. That's a, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. I could see the finale of season one, like wrapping up as Force Awakens is going. I don't know. I kind of just wanted to be Kaz, like on a starship, on his way to see his father. <laughs> Star Killer happens, but that's just that's mean. <laughs> so. No, I mean it might happen, and I think yeah. it's also important to note Resistance really brings home the point that the First Order at this point is a fringe it's a, a fringe group at best it's a conspiracy yeah i theory, mean that's essentially that's completely what it is pre-force awakens before they destroy hosni and prime the government will not acknowledge that the first order exists this like, is that's like, what half of the first order's like mentality is they're like if they're not even going to acknowledge us with all of our star destroyers and stuff then they're not fit to govern well, this, the world this, it reminds <laughs> like, me of, it reminds me of like um of in harry potter when they don't want to yeah, say exactly. that Voldemort's We back. ignore Voldemort like, it, forever until he completely owns that's, everything. That's what and it then, reminds me of, yeah. and I kind of really yeah, like I can that, see that. that. Yeah, I yeah. really I'm, like that about I, their dynamic. With the I'm first glad order Resistance the... put the focus back on the yeah. the First Order's a myth. No yeah. one outside yeah. of, the, of, of this small group of people mm-hmm. believes it exists. And it, it'd be essentially and I mean, the like, same the as the people who do are like Doza, and he just thinks up, that they're showing up to like, help or what like they're this group of kind of like big mercenaries or something they're like they're the mob of, yeah. yeah like they're just kind of this thing no one thinks that they're actually an enormous military organization that will yeah. completely destroy the it's, government it's like the illuminati blowing up the yeah. washington dc tomorrow and then let's all be like oh, yeah it's the illuminati yeah yeah of course they did so yeah. um i don't want to run this over too long um are there any, um, we didn't really touch on comics. Now, Rob, you're following current comics a little bit more than we are. We, we followed the Poe Dameron comics. I, I followed the mainline Star Wars for a little bit. 
Um, I fell off it a little bit, but I did read, you know, the first run of Darth Vader. I read a little bit of the Dr. Aphra stuff. Mm -hmm. What's, what's coming up in comics that you're excited about? Cause we, we I want to touch on that briefly before we close out here. So we just had a huge storyline finish up in comics. I've already mentioned it. The Charles Soule, Darth Vader, mm -hmm. 2018 comics. Now Charles Soule was also the one who was writing yes, the Poe Dameron, Dameron comic. Um, yep. and he was doing mm -hmm. some work for... Well, that's, that's unrelated. He was doing yeah. some X-Men stuff, but that's not related. But go ahead. It doesn't matter. Charles Soule, I think, is uh, not to be too corny, but it's the soul of Star Wars comics right now. Okay. Um, whatever he's writing tends to be fantastic. He sets things up well. He creates clear backstory where you say, this is going to be brought back. See, that's yeah. interesting. I think he must just care about Darth Vader more because Poe Dameron, he really dropped the ball. Well, I think Poe Dameron, I think po Dameron is a, I think Poe Dameron was meant to be a mini that got turned into yeah, a short, a longer Yeah, it got stretched ongoing. way too long because a lot of his plot lines and stuff just stop making sense toward the end of Poe Dameron or they get cut really short. Um, they'll make big decisions that seem like it's going to be the lead up to Force Awakens and like this should be the last issue. But and then, then they no. keep going. Yeah, they keep going. Like, like it starts still out. Still work for a company. It yeah. starts like that book starts with Poe looking for Lor Santeca, and, and finds then they somehow him about stretch it. Yeah, and then they somehow stretch it like fifty more. And then issues. they continue to write. But, every every comic book series will go through a lull. Yeah. I mean, the the main Star Wars line went through about six episodes with with this weird Yoda arc where Yoda fights mm -hmm. a mountain. Six issues. Yeah, it was like um, something around that. So okay, but, but I think but even like the very last weird. story in Poe Dameron that was like post Last Jedi, it was also really bad. Like they set up this big event where like oh, where Black, Black Squadron, Squadron was, was going to get yeah. stranded on this planet, and it looked like half of them were already dead, and we were gonna like they were gonna go save them. And then everybody lives and gets through the end. Not to spoil the end of the Poe Dameron thing, but like literally every single Which, person gets out of there alive and everything is fine. I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna complain too much about that. I do love my Black Squadron. I love Black Squadron, but there's I wouldn't no blame drama Charles Soule for this. Think I think it's. Happens. I think it's the same symptom we've been talking about. With yeah. you can't touch anything that truly matters yeah. in the new movies. Somebody until the that third we might want to tell a story. So about. okay. So what's coming up though? So what's coming up is well, we've got the age of Re the age of Republic and the age of Rebellion stuff. Obviously, we've right. had we've had the Darth Maul of that. We've had a couple of those. So we've got mm -hmm. we had Qui Gon and we're gonna we had Obi Wan. We're gonna, we're gonna mm -hmm. wrap up Age of Republic and we're gonna move to Age of Rebellion. Um, what else? What else we got? Well, I think that is gonna be the big comic this year. Is these one shot stories for different <laughs> characters in each era. There's another one coming out starting next month with Darth Vader, and it's not. Direct. Of course there is. Well, <laughs> Darth Vader really, to a lot of people, is Star Wars still. I'm saying there's a lot more to Star Wars than that, but for a lot of people, he's the focal point. Yeah. And uh, there's going to be an interesting series coming out where it's not um, actual stories about Darth Vader, but stories about people around him mm -hmm. and their interactions with Darth Vader. Um, actually, this originally, from what I'm reading on the internet, was supposed to be a Chuck Wendig um, I, series and then yeah. because he got pulled they kept some of the same ideas and they're going to release something else which is sad i would have liked to seen his take on this well chuck Wendig had plans to eventually do like singer and stuff in the comics so i mean i could i could just rant about how sad i am that we're not going to see that because i i love what chuck Wendig brought to star wars um mm -hmm. i'm really sad that we're not going to see more of him on the comics but yeah go ahead continue oh. um but uh there's just comics we're gonna see some good stuff come out. Uh, it does. They're usually they don't they don't release the whole year's listing. I'm sure around mm -hmm. Comic Con we'll get yeah. some more announcements. We're gonna get more announcements during uh, the Star Wars celebration this year. Uh, it's gonna be a, a fun year for comics, though. Um, I think books are gonna be a big focus, but comics. Well, the books we've announced so far, a lot of people are excited about mm -hmm. um, with Alphabet Squadron and Master and Apprentice and stuff like that. Um, 2019 could end up being the year of Vader. We've got the, the Vader VR thing coming out. Um, I think, I think there's a discussion to be had there about when, when, when you've, when you've hit the point of, of too much Vader, <laughs> when you've got like a Vader mass of well, a singularity of Vader. Batman where hasn't just... gotten there yet with the Joker. No, so that's true. We have not going. gotten that. We haven't gotten there with a lot of characters. I mean, yet, you were, so. we are talking about the chosen one, not a chosen one, the chosen well, one. Or actually, we're hoping that's the case. Yeah. Some people are theorizing based on some new material that got released. It could be changed. Um, but and we'll that's see. true. We won't, 
<laughs> but well, anyways, but I wouldn't. I, yeah. I have no problem if they do decide yeah. someone else is the chosen one. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, at this point in Star Wars lore, yes, as far as we know right there's now, there's only one. Well, I'm not a big fan of of chosen one stuff in general, which is why, which is why I, I, I okay, cling. but that's the idea of it. But this is actual canon in Star Wars. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I think that might have been changed when Obi Wan tells yes. a dying Darth Maul. Very Spoilers well. alert. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm, he's yeah. I, watching the chosen one. Right. And that's why I don't think we've seen the end of Luke Skywalker in the movies. I oh, think we haven't. Mark Hamill's think, coming back for episode nine. For sure. Right. We I'm, already I'm know hoping that. more than just a flashback force memory. I'm hoping. I mean, we're pretty sure he's going to be a force ghost, but we're not positive, right. obviously. But, but that will actually be sure. a discussion for our next discussion episode, which is going to be our kind of what we would hope to see in yeah. episode nine. But I think for now, we've kind of wrapped up all the main big stuff that at least we want to talk about coming up in 2019. If there's something we missed, because I'm sure there is, or just something that we didn't talk about specifically, like maybe a book or a comic that we didn't specifically hit on that you're looking forward to, um, throw it in the comments. You know, we want to know what you guys are excited about. We want to get people talking. We want a really positive discussion community here. Um, but we're going to come back with another discussion episode um, about what we're looking forward to in episode nine. And we'll um, see you guys then. Uh, and I've been Matt. Carly. Rob. <laughs> And uh, you guys have a great life. That was terrible. <laughs> Happy Life Day. Happy Life Day. Happy, Happy Fat Week. <laughs> Happy New Year's. Uh, and just look forward to all the awesome Star Wars stuff we've got coming in store for us. Take how, care. How do they say goodbye in the Outer Rim? Is it, just... They shoot you. Yeah. <laughs>